Welcome to the Harley Street Heart and Vascular Center. I will be your host. My name is Dr. Rohit Karana and I'm one of the cardiologists based at this clinic. Welcome to the Interventional Case Corner, the series. Welcome to case two. I would like to share with you my second case, which is that of a 49-year-old gentleman who has recently referred to my care from his primary care physician. This gentleman described to both his primary care physician and myself um, a very, very clear history of exertional chest discomfort, which had been affecting him for about three weeks before I first met him. The discomfort was predictably occurring whilst he was jogging, and in the one or two days before our meeting, our first meeting, the symptoms were also starting to affect him whilst even on a brisk walk. The primary care physician very helpfully performed a cardiac CT, and a CT scan is an imaging modality, a non-invasive imaging modality, which helps one appreciate with high resolution the detail of one's coronary arteries. And this reported a calcium score, which was 9, which is an extremely low score, but more importantly than the score, it also reported the presence of a moderately severe blockage within the mid-segment of the left anterior descending artery, which is the principal artery supplying the heart's muscle mass. This gentleman had no other important major medical issues. His only risk factor for heart disease was that of a moderately elevated lipoprotein little a, which is a cholesterol fraction, which is well known to be a, an important contributor to the risk of developing coronary plaque. He underwent a treadmill exercise test, which was very clearly positive and convincing for ischemia, which means that the blockage was certainly limiting the amount of blood getting to the heart muscle. And during the stress test, it also reproduced the typical chest discomfort he described to both me and his primary care physician. What you can see on the slide is a picture of the CT. And in the mid part of the artery, you can see very clearly, I would like to think that there is almost an abrupt cessation of the dye with it almost being absent in the mid part here, with the remainder of the artery then, then filling and showing the presence of dye, which representative of the blood supply. So he went on to have a coronary angiogram, and this is what I do as an interventional cardiologist, which is a direct invasive assessment of the person's heart's blood supply. And what you can see here on the left-hand slide is an arrow pointing to where the CT very accurately described the presence of a blockage. And this is clearly the culprit cause of this gentleman's chest pain, which we can now label as angina, which is the cardiac um, reason for why people develop chest pain when there is a significant blockage obstruct, obstructing the blood supply um, during periods of higher heart rate demand for example, during exercise, and in this case, progressing to relatively lower intensities of exercise, affecting him whilst he was brisk walking. And on the right-hand slide, the right-hand side of this slide, you can see where the bold line is, the presence of where I placed a stent, which overcomes the blockage and restores the blood supply to normal. The purpose of showing you this case today is like in my first case to illustrate the importance of how intravascular imaging, which is a tool which um, interventional cardiologists like myself um, use very routinely to help guide and optimise the procedural outcome. So as I've mentioned before in my first case, um, it's a tool which uses infrared light to provide very high definition images of what's happening inside the artery. And so with this gentleman, I did a OCT image of the lesion just prior to treatment. And what you can see on this slide um, is uh, an extremely important um, usefulness of uh, OCT imaging. It illustrates where this blue line cross-sections the artery, just how the plaque is comprised, which is mostly fibrous in nature. Coronary plaque has 
multiple morphological characteristics. It can either be calcified, it can be um, lipid or cholesterol rich, or as in this gentleman's case, it can be mostly comprised of fibrous tissue, which explains the calcium score being very low. And this gentleman's blockage has barely minimal calcification. And this slide shows what also the usefulness of um, OCT is. So here is a cartoon of a stent placed within the artery. And prior to placement of a stent, um, you can use OCT to gain what is an understanding of the distal reference diameter and the proximal reference diameter. And this type of measurement through OCT can help guide what diameter stent to use. And in this gentleman's case, it was very useful to help further uh, choose the type of stent. Once the stent was placed in the artery, uh, we can use OCT to further assess the stent deployment result. And this shows that there is um, absolutely normal and healthy um, expansion of the stent according to the guidelines that um, uh, uh, underpins the, the usefulness of OCT. It shows that the stent struts are well opposed to the vessel wall and there's no other complications such as a dissection or tear. And this is the final image which I showed you in an earlier slide and so after um, use, using the OCT we take the angiogram pictures again and you can see that this is where the stent has been placed and I know from the OCT images that the inside looks very healthy and so I would hope this gentleman does very well and this stent which I used is a, an absorbable scaffold which means that within five years um, it would actually resorb within the vessel wall leaving no metallic footprint and hopefully a healthy artery and rendering him symptom-free hereafter. Thank you.